E passiamo subito alle, alla seconda conferenza, appunto, che è, sarà di Monique Ulvè. Eh, Monique è direttrice, appunto, della catalogazione di collezioni speciali alla Biblioteca Municipale di Lione e ha partecipato moltissimo, appunto, a questo e anche ad altri eh, progetti, eh, appunto, eh, con le provenienze di Incunabola e quindi lei ci parlerà di Sellers and Buyers of the Lyon Book Market in the late 15th century. Thank you. In March 1478, Barthélemy Buillet, the cloth merchant who had initiated printing in Lyon five years before, sold a dozen titles in 68 volumes to the Avignon booksellers Alain and Joachim de Rome. Seven titles were printed for Buillet by Guillaume, Guillaume Leroy, or newly arrived German printers, uh, Martin Hus or Johann Sieber. These books, in French, were sold bound and illuminated, which explains a somewhat high price for the extra. Nine and a half florins for each of the three copies of the Golden Legend. It's about uh, seven livres, livre tournois, which is like the Lire 20 soldi. The remnants were law books, eight volumes, which Buillet had to purchase from other centers, mostly Italy, and sold unbound for 35 florins, about a fifth of the total. A year before, the Lyonnais were cited, along with other book merchants, in the complaints of the illuminators of Toulouse, coping with the invasion of printed books, which they said had already been destroying their business for several years. And here is a view of uh, the printed production at the time. German and Italian print books seemed available in abundance in Avignon, where as valuable goods, they were used as payment of debts or as security deposits. Buillet's sale possibly serves as a prototype of how the Lyon book trade developed with a certain proportion of books imported from elsewhere. Was Buillet trying to produce more and more as fast as possible in Lyon, as was always thought, or had he already assessed the value, the, the benefit also, um, of selling imported books uh, from Italy, where he had strong business connections, or uh, from Basel, for his new partners, for a substantial profit complementing the sale of his own production. A strategic location, Lyon then knew a great economic expansion tied to the Venetian spice trade in particular. The holding of a fourth annual fair marked an important step forward in its prosperity, increasing the number of merch foreign merchants and bankers in the city. New printers enjoyed low taxation, enticing German, Italian, and French craftsmen to settle around the Rue Mercier. So here is the Rue Mercier in between the two bridges on the two rivers, uh, conveniently located from uh, the north is on the right, like uh, uh, previously, and uh, joining also this axis from south uh, with importation from Italy, the southern gate, to the right, on the right, the uh, gates to the north. And the Rue Mercier is just, just on this axis, a uh, convenient place maybe for printing, but mostly for selling books. Recent studies describe 160 main actors of the book world showing great discrepancies in their property-based tax taxation. From a few fund providers to the many workmen, and many other agents of the book um, were not listed, of course, mentioned in the uh, tax rolls. Without a university or parliament, Lyon was not a known center of learning, unlike Toulouse or Avignon or Paris. Tradesmen, merchants, whose sons were studying law elsewhere, and a few doctors composed most of the lay public. The city counted also many clerics and high clergy, but only a few personalities had remarkable libraries. Early printed pro production geared at exportation consisted mostly of medieval compilations. 
um, books of sermons, Bible, religious books, uh, with abundant woodcuts reflecting the preoccupation for salvation and translated into French by Augustinian monks, a safe strategy making no attempt at introducing a new spirit in art and literature, copying instead a practice already well established, like texts and types, woodblocks from Basel, Germany, moved to Lyon or were reproduced there. An initiative of Lyon publishing in France, chivalric romances, planted the seeds from which French popular literature would later flourish, particularly with the itinerant book trade. Also quite noticeably, an early specialization on law and medical books. So an urban clientele of clergy, doctors, and lawyers um, are going to remain the main target of Lyon publishing throughout the, the period. The local structures of the book trade suggest a supple way of doing business, multiple short-term partnership as well as competition, shared housing and costs, multifaceted activities, a pragmatism and ability to organize, to seize opportunities with minimal risk. Lower risks can also justify the publishing of books of law in small quantities on a smaller scale than was once believed about the Lyon production. While many questions remain about the subject, it is clear that Lyon could never compare nor compete with the enormous Venetian production, even after 1490, when Sieber's publication of law books increased greatly. But instead of large print runs, the production was probably balanced with the known market and republications and several uh, elements point, no, other elements point to this possibility, like the paper supplies and so on. Such adjustments were likely to be one of the reasons behind the success of the Lyon merchants, which made them desirable partners for the paper makers of Amber in Auvergne, for instance, interdependent and with mutual interest, they prospered in harmony and in concert. While France was Lyon's first market, Spain and Portugal were always part of the picture, which explains in part the Lyonnais' aggressive marketing in Toulouse, the gate to the Iberian Peninsula. German and Basel printers were also on that road selling their own editions. Merchants like Barthélemy Buyer and his brother Jacques and others knew that a more or less permanent stock of books in an inn there in Toulouse was sufficient without waiting for a demand but creating the demand in an open market. With valuable funds and wise investments, Barthélemy Buyer died a rich man in 1483. On the contrary, victim of such ruthless competition, printing was short-lived in Albi. Printers in Toulouse like Heinrich Turner uh, were familiar with the debtors', debtors prison and Heinrich Meyer later died in poverty. A key to successful distribution, the regular fairs, each lasting two weeks, ensured the dynamics of people, money, and goods. In the 1480s, Lyon was already known as a resource center for the book. Paul Horus from Constance, a successful printer bookseller in Zaragoza, and a partner in the Ravensburg Merchant Company, attended the fairs purchasing equipment for his presses and bismuth for the fabrication of his types. He had dealings with Matthias Huss, reusing Huss's images for his own editions. At the same time, he was also exporting furs from Spain to Germany via Lyon as well, a resourceful and multifaceted businessman. Later on, Anton Koberger, another great entrepreneur, recommended the fairs of Lyon to Johann Ammerbach of Basel as a good place for banking, for payment, for, and for safe roads, which he didn't have uh, around Nuremberg anymore at the time. Business on a large scale, all books passing through such commercial crossroads could be printed anywhere, sold near and far to retailers or individual buyers, and if to the latter, Koberger recommended for about 20% more. Relaying and extending the networks also suggests partnership as much as competition. A nomadic bookseller based in Lyon, Johann Schebeler, better known as Vattenschnee, always on the road, 
was the multiple task agent of Koberger, but also of Hammerbach in Lyon and of the Lyon printers in Paris, playing a great role in the diffusion of books, the fairs, blur the schemes drawn from geographically anchored printed production. Along with the knowledge of sale networks and logistics, time management was essential when, between the printing and selling an edition, keeping up with the calendars of the fairs. A great stress to meet payments and save on tolls, for instance. And managing also uh, the cost of transportation, the backbone of commerce, balancing distance with cargo, the many tolls on land and rivers, and the multiple contingencies. On the major axis, Lyon-Toulouse, the freight was done on mule back, 200 to 400 pounds per animal, including the heavy pack, at a pace of about then 34 kilometers a day. And here are uh, two, oops, tout éteint. Okay. two views uh, of uh, the long distance freight transport uh, a bit later um, in the Lyon area between uh, Toulouse and uh, Raven, uh, Ravensburg. If books in sheets traveled in bales like paper or in barrels like uh, we saw even for bound books, we were wondering if the bound books from Lyon could travel in such uh, equipment like uh, wooden chests with, along with other fragile and expensive goods. On often difficult terrain and harsh weather in winter, it took two weeks minimum from Lyon to Toulouse, depending, um, adding at least a quarter to uh, the price of the goods themselves, like for transporting merchandise in wagons. Um, three times more, of course, than transport by water. Part of the global economy, the price of transport, as we just saw, had important consequences on the book trade and on the prices. A map of conservation of Lyon imprints was drawn from ISTC by Philippe Nieto from the French National Archives about 12 years ago. Most collections have not moved far from their place of arrival over the centuries. By superimposing a map of the main trade routes from Lyon. We can guess the importance of those uh, commercial networks for the distribution of books, the city being conveniently located at a center of a web of interconnecting roads and waterways. Contemporary material evidence drawn from the French regional catalogues of Incunabula, now advancing, helps greatly visualize the dealings of the Lyon merchant, of the book merchants. The integration of this data into May in the future will, of course, considerably extend the perspective they provide through the space-time of the book trade. So combined data so far reveal a strong representation of Lyon editions in northern France, more than expected since it was the traditional ground of the much wider and powerful Parisian book trade. It suggests a strong presence of the Lyonnais in Normandy probably because of their active networking in Paris. Like, for instance, Janon Carquin from Lyon joined forces with the Parisian bookseller Michel Lenoir. He even sold in person a Parisian Rouen imprints to King Charles VIII. There is a concentration of the earliest Lyon imprint in Poitou due to uh, its long tradition of commerce with Lyon in the area of Toulouse in exchange, where the Lyonnais had anticipated an opportunity, the earliest surviving title is from 1477, possibly because um, they were selling mostly imported books. Early provenance reflects the penetration of the books in French among the, in, into the world of craftsmen and shopkeepers. Nicolas Lefebvre, master glove maker in Paris, owned Le Miroir de la Rédemption. Pe Speculum Salvationis. A pin maker in Montbrison, a copy of Bartholomeus Anglicus, Le Propriétaire des Choses, a locksmith in Cahors, read Pierre de Provence et la Belle Magdalene, with delight. It also documents the second hand market, still at a high price for modest buyers like Pierre Thomé, a cleric in Lyon, who had to rely upon barter. Uh, in order to afford his own copy of the Fortalicium Fidei, 
in the uh, Valzarin edition for about one livre tournoi. Um, and he says, and it cost me 10 soldi and six pints of wine, presumably. Ephemeral deposits in smaller market towns along the roads, although undocumented, were very important relays. Uh, they could also have allowed the display of books in churches, inns, or streets, providing at least a first visual encounter with expensive and forbidding objects uh, for the population in these rural areas. Lyon editions reached Spain and Portugal more steadily after 1490, when the fairs of Medina del Campo developed. And here is an example of a Franciscan former owner of several, uh, a Portuguese former owner of several Lyon editions at the time in Portugal in its uh, binding, uh, local binding from there. With, um, also with the increased production of law books, and when Johann Trexel, Jean de Vingle, or Nicolas Wolf arrived on the book stage, and their books are all over Spain and Portugal. Printing theology and philology, the learned networks of Trexel and José Badius, his son-in-law, uh, their respective connections to the Dominican and Carmelite orders granted the success of their editions in convents, monasteries, and with the European scholarly and erudite circles away from the general trade networks. Selling learning, and here is in the works of Occam, Badius addressed to students, promoting the preservation and multiplication of texts in praise of the printing industry, which allows copies to be cheaper in very business-like terms. All this introduced new marketing schemes in a city now preparing for the Italian wars and opening to the subtleties of Neoplatonism and the Christian Kabbalah. Meanwhile, through the growing activity of its fairs, Lyon had evidently become a cogwheel in the larger engine of the book trade. When his Hugo Bible was finally ready, in Basel in 1502, it was in seven parts. Uh, Koberger asked 300 copies to be sent to his agent in Lyon at the fairs and some to Strasbourg. The flow of important books which traveled via the city can also be documented by Lyon bindings on uh, volumes printed in Basel, Venice, and other Venetian cit Italian cities. The other, uh, the original bindings preserved in Auvergne near Lyon on such imprints include a number of well-identified printed fragments, mostly printer's waste, so recycling, from uh, 12 Lyon editions and seven print shops. And they have all been very well uh, identified by uh, Dominique Frasson Cochet, uh, used as paste down or fly leaves, like an example of, here is one of four unsold copies of a um, letter of indulgence printed in Lyon in 1491. Sorry about the, the change in the uh, typography, um, the problem with the format. Printed in Lyon in 1491, in the binding of a Venetian imprint of, from 1495, read or used in Le Puy two years later, I guess it's truncated. And also some binders waste from a dismantled book, the popular Alexander de Villadei's Doctrinale by Leroy in the early 1480s. Other Lyon bindings can be located in Champagne with a fleur de lis painted au pochoir uh, stenciled. And this must have evolved into the same motif, but this time blind stamped in lozenges or friezes. Um, unfortunately, a very uh, common uh, pattern. It was used elsewhere at several places, but it was commonly used in Lyon in the 1490s. They were found on books printed in Basel or in Italy, which have remained in the city to this day. Ah, it's a, it's a, an edition from Basel and uh, one from Milan. Similar bindings have survived on copies kept in Troyes, Paris, Colmar, Bourges, on Lyon, Basel, Venetian, and other imprints. And this is corroborated by the works of Denise Gide, 
on the blind stand bindings at the Bibliothèque Mazarine. They are found with, along with other specific tools, like this Occitan cross, alone or as a pattern, and several others uh, that I have recently identified. It confirms that the proportion of imported books was bound and sometimes fabricated, in, but in a very standard and um, homogeneous way, as a strong add-on value, about, say, 50%, maybe, to the price, before being sold on the local and the French market, possibly on a large scale. Indeed, if we look closely, uh, their blind tooling seems hastily applied, evoking more mass production than the proud work of one or two workshops. There were five known uh, bookbinders in Lyon at the time. Bindings, binding could also uh, be a strategy to activate uh, the sale of unsold copy, uh, copies to make it more attractive, of course, and uh, sell better. Some have, uh, are a few, have, have been in Lyon for a few years, at least. At about this time, something very important happened on the Rue Mercier. Bonino Bonini, with Bartolomeo Trot, de Trotti, his agent, and Baldassare da Gabbiano, all with diverse ties to Venice, strong ties, started their book business in Lyon. So once thoroughly documented, uh, the Lyon bindings recently identified on Venetian imprints might well add evidence of the choice by the Venetian book trade of Lyon and its fairs as a relay towards the northern European market already in the early 1490s. And uh, this is uh, just the beginning. We will have to document this much, much further with uh, everybody's help, of course. <laughs> Thank you. Grazie Monique, eh, credo Neil che il tuo elenco di Ryanair si lievita ancora, come abbiamo sentito, sia per il trasporto, sia per le legature. La questione è anche come si potrebbe a, in un futuro capire esattamente quanto, se veramente c'è un prezzo, diciamo così, di base quando esce proprio dalla bottega, no? dello stampatore e cosa succede dopo, perché se prendiamo delle fonti dove, non lo so, per esempio a Memmingen troviamo qualcuno che ha comprato qualche cosa di Venezia, possiamo veramente presumere che è esattamente, lo stesso, se è esattamente la stessa copia senza appunto rubricatura o illustrazione o altre cose, possiamo presumere che un veneziano che ha comprato dallo stesso stampatore a Venezia aveva lo stesso prezzo? perché comunque abbiamo visto quanto lievita il trasporto e tutto quanto quindi è un lavoro secondo me dopo di fine tuning da fare non da poco proprio sulle fonti stesse <ride>